Well, hello, friends. This is J. Wooten Jr. That is the letter J exclamation point. Reaching out to you from life in the key of J. That's my place on the web for sharing insightful Bible-based meditations and muses in the form of poems, prose, and praise music on issues of today and our coming tomorrow. Located at J-W-O-O-T-E-N-J-R dot blogspot dot com. Please click below to subscribe and leave your comments on any of the posts. Written versions of these audio posts are also on Life in the Key of J. Again, that's the letter J exclamation point. J-W-O-O-T-E-N-J-R dot blogspot dot com. Following is a recent post related to my continuing desire to encourage folk to see life's problems, challenges, and especially crises from God's viewpoint. Then They Will Know, Part 1 Any serious student of the Bible will quickly discern God's deeply rooted desire for people to, quote, no, I am the Lord. Unquote. This phrase frequently echoes across the pages of his holy writ. Sometimes God declares he will be so known when an unbelievable blessing or miracle has occurred after having been predicted by a prophet. Many more times, however, he declares he will be so known just as some catastrophic judgment is unfolding, wiping out those who are most severely judged, or just after such, leaving a judgment remnant to come to this knowledge. At this current time in human history, we hear and learn far less of unbelievable blessings or miracles, but we are figuratively up to our ears in crisis after crisis. Since the Lord, as sovereign God, iteratively accentuates his control and direct interventions in the affairs of mankind, it behooves us to a. be both attentive to and instructed by what he has said, and b. use this as a lens through which to understand the spiritual significance of crises we are experiencing. It may seem rather easy to connect the dots when God has spoken to a prophet directly to a people and the event prophesied later materializes. What I scratch my head about is when he instructs a prophet in one location to speak either to or about a people in a distant location, Jews and Gentiles alike, and then concludes with, quote, Then they shall know that I am the Lord, unquote. This leaves me pondering. Okay, we understand to and about whom he is speaking and what predicted event will trigger their knowing. But how will they know he is the Lord especially Gentiles who were far away from the speaker and who presumably did not know God at all. On the latter point, the Bible iteratively illustrates God's modus operandi, includes triggering faith within some person to the point of believing, speaking, and then acting on his word. So I imagine him planting word seeds in the earth realm seed that germinate and produce his fruit when received in human hearts. Moreover, I ponder, how does the Lord, who does not change, expect people today to know that he is the Lord? He declares, quote, For I am the Lord, I do not change, unquote while his nature and his strategy in dealing with humans do not change, his tactics apparently do change. In this age of grace, 
god speaks to us believers directly through his son jesus christ and his holy word and indirectly through us believers to the unbelieving world and his most harsh judgment crises will speak loudly to people during the tribulation period in both these periods that's the age of grace and the coming tribulation period though people will understand he is the lord they still will not believe in him nor embrace him as savior and lord so does this infer he does not speak to us now through judgment crises i do not know for sure but this is abundantly clear through church attendance and other ways people who are not normally spiritually minded suddenly become so in times of crises to me this suggests they may have some latent spiritual insights and awareness like seeds that only germinate in the stress of crises but that never bear fruits of repentance and a fundamentally changed life perhaps this might have been the case of ancient sinful gentile nations noted in the bible nations who were judged to the point of quote, knowing god is the lord unquote, at the very point of their downfall moreover in his grace amazing crises today may well be the leading edge of the coming worse tribulation crises they may be a foretaste if you will of what's on the horizon and time to anticipate prepare for and decide to embrace his offer to escape which is salvation in jesus as christ and lord so what do you think are heaven's messages encoded in crises today as in the past and if so what and if not why not many believe crises are merely continuing evidence of the quote fallenness unquote of a god rejecting world with no specific correlations to particular sinfulness please feel free to comment below with your bible-based answers and relevant verses not just simply unsubstantiated hunches thank you okay friends there you have it i hope you will take time to reflect and meditate on the insights in this post you can find a written version on my blog, Life in the Key of J. That's the letter J exclamation point. Located at jwootenjr dot blogspot dot com. While there, please take time to check out some of the lyrics and web links to listen to my music. My music comprises 117 songs in seven published albums, including 55 vocal and 62 soundtrack selections. Please click below to subscribe and to leave a comment. Alternatively, you may contact me at keyofjlife at gmail.com. That's K-E-Y-O-F-J-L-I-F-E at gmail.com. I will be looking forward to connecting with you on the next time. Till then, may the Lord Jesus Christ grace your every step, thought, and word.